Hey, what's up? Welcome to the SMA Marketing Minute. Today we're gonna to be taking a deep dive into Google Analytics and how you can use it for your small business to understand more about your users. Let's go. I'm gonna hit the brakes, I'll fly right by. 60% of the time, it works every time. How was that again? Hey, hey, 10 points for our fearless leader. That's not an option, you gotta keep on keeping on. Life's a garden, dig it, you make it work for you. You never give up, man, that's my philosophy. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Welcome to the S and O Marketing Network. So today's question comes from Craig Lewis from rechargeclass.com.au and he wanted to know how can a new site owner, somebody just getting into online marketing, use Google Analytics to understand more about their users and really grow their traffic over time. So instead of me sitting here and talking to you in a camera, I'm actually going to do a demo and we're going to go right into Google Analytics right now and take a look at how we can use a few of the key components to better understand the people coming to our website. All right, welcome to the breakdown of Google Analytics. Right now we're on the audience overview page and this is often where you're gonna land when you log into Google Analytics. Now, you can do a lot of manipulation inside of Google Analytics. You can build different dashboards and customized reports and you can really do uh, almost anything you want inside of here to manipulate the data to get the details and the metrics that you want to see. But we're not going to get into all that. We're just going to see how can we use the basic setup of Google Analytics to make better decisions for our small business. Better decisions about our website and how to drive traffic and engage with our visitors as they come. The first thing you want to look at over here is the time frame in which you uh, want to see the data from. So we can customize this to today, yesterday, last week, month, seven days, whatever. You can build in custom frames, you know, just by clicking and dragging. Um, so we'll look at the month of January. And we'll set the date there. Hit apply. You can also compare it to the previous period. So it'll just take those same date amounts and apply it. So it would look at the whole month of December. We're not going to get into comparison, but it's really helpful to see and judge, you know, how you did versus another time period. But in order to keep the data clean and the page clean, we're just going to look at January. We hit apply. And as you can see now, it's going to look at our sessions data. And what this is doing is pulling in the number of visits that we had on each day in the month. Audience overview isn't going to break down your traffic sources. It's just going to give you a big overview of how many people came to your site, what was the average engagement of those, those people who came to your site, and their interaction overall. Underneath here, you see some of the data breakdown. So 563 sessions, so 563 uh, visits to the site. The next is users, is 459 users. So out of those 563 sessions, there were 459 users. So some of those people came back and engaged with the site again. Or maybe there were multiple people using uh, one IP address but still went to the same site. That's kind of how that breaks it down. So users is the amount of actual different people uh, came to your site, in essence. Page views are the number of pages that were viewed over that course, um, that the, the time frame that you set. And then pages per session is just a breakdown of what's the average amount of pages a user saw. The average session duration is the amount of time they spent on the site. The bounce rate is the percent of people that came to your site and then immediately left. So you want to have a lower bounce rate. A higher bounce rate, a bounce rate of you know, upper 60s, 70s, 80s is, is an indication that your site's not engaging. Uh, enough with your audience or maybe you have a, a content driven site where you do blog posts and people come to your site read the post and leave that can also drive up your bounce rate but you want to pay attention to it because if it's too high it means people aren't really engaging with your content and going deeper and the percent of new sessions is pretty self-explanatory too if you actually scroll over these google will give you a little bit of a, a blurb about what it means some other helpful data inside of uh, audience and is the demographics and the interests. If we look at the demographics, we can get a baseline of the age of the people coming to our site and their gender. 
This is helpful for just a number of reasons. It's helpful to understand who your customer base is, who are the people that are engaging with your site, who are the people that are interested in the stuff that you're posting. Uh, as you can see here, this site has dominant female traffic and it's in the 25 to 34 age group. So when you're building your messaging out, when you're looking at the design of your site, you probably want to gear it towards them because again, they're your dominant user. Go even deeper, you can click interests and we see the overview here. Now this breaks down how those people interact, not just with your website, but in things as a whole. So you have their affinity category. So what, what are the things that they're, they're interested in? You know, movie lovers is the number one affinity for this site. Then shopper, shopaholic, TV lovers, technophiles, and it, it kind of breaks it down through there. Um, it tells us what are some of the things that they're interested in outside of the, the, our site. And again, this is going to help you understand your, your personas a little bit better. It's going to help you understand um, what they like and what they don't like. And again, as you're building out your marketing campaigns and your strategies, you can kind of use uh, some of the things that they like outside of the industry to promote your products as well. In market segment, so uh, if, if these are related categories within the same market that again would show them what they like. So travel, hotel, accommodations, employment, real estate. This data isn't always 100% because the site we're looking at isn't technically in that market. But again, we can still pull some data and understand what our audience is interested in. Other categories, again, just more data on the things that they're interested in. So arts and entertainment, celebrity news, movie lovers, shopaholics, travel, hotel accommodations. We can take all that data and start to really add it to our buyer persona research because this is real data from real users who are engaging with our site. You can get more information, you know, geo-target, make sure that you're targeting in the right location, um, in the right language. Again, predominantly United States, which is what we want to see, predominantly in Florida, which is what we want to see for this business as well. We can look at, you know, technology, we can look at behavior, new versus returning, frequency, engagement. All of these are very helpful to understand when you're building a site, when you're designing a site, and when you're tweaking your site to better fit your user's needs. As you can see, most sessions are zero to 10 seconds. So that means people are coming and, and maybe leaving pretty quick. Um, then as you go down, it's 11 to 30, 31 to 60. You can, you can read it and see. Um, again, this will help us understand how long people are on the site. For this business, a lot of people are probably coming to the site to get the phone number because of what they do, uh, which is probably where you see that smaller duration period. All right, so the second area we're going to look at is acquisition overview. So acquisition is where your traffic's coming from. Again, we're in the same time frame looking at January. Um, I do have a filter set up because in this account there was some some spammy traffic coming, so we actually wanted to remove that from the acquisition so we actually saw data that made sense. Right here you're going to see a nice overview, top channels, organic is the top channel, direct traffic, referral traffic, social traffic. So again, as you go under here, it's going to break it down right here on the main acquisition overview page. It's going to show us organic search and all the data behind that, the new visitors, their bounce rate with organic search, the conversion rates, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Then we're going to look about direct traffic. So direct traffic is people that actually typed in your website's URL. Underneath that is referral traffic. So referral traffic is people who came to your site from another site. So maybe they saw a link on another site. Maybe they saw a link on Yelp or uh, an industry-related article. They clicked that, and then they came to your site. And the last one is social media traffic. And these are the people, obviously, that are coming through social channels. If you want to dig a little bit deeper, you go over at all traffic. You can do channels, tree maps, source, mediums. Let's go to source and medium. Now to show us again, organic, Google organic search. Again, all the fun data with that. Direct traffic, Bing organic, Yahoo traffic, uh, Insider Pro referral, Facebook referral, StumbleUpon referral, Facebook medium. So this will start to give you the exact source. So 
what was the the site and what was the medium so how did it find you so this was the source was google and it found us through organic traffic and this was direct it had no medium because they typed it in direct that's basically how to understand that data so a majority of this site's traffic is coming from search it's always good to hook up your search console because again it'll pull in more data um, I'm not going to open up this right now because I don't want to give away any of this customer's information. All right, so now we're under behavior, and this is the behavior overview page. Now, as you see here, you're going to see a list of landing pages. It's going to break down the page view, um, the percent of page views. We're also going to see site content. You can also adjust that to page title. Um, as opposed to pages so you can actually start to see some of the keywords that are associated um, in that you can even toggle over here to search terms again there's no data now Google masks a lot of that data so that's another benefit to having your search console tied in because you're gonna get a little bit more of that keyword data but for the most part most of your search term data is gonna be masked by Google um, they do that for a number of reasons and if you want to get all that data you can definitely pay them for that but if you're just looking at Google Analytics, you're probably not going to see a ton of that. But that, again, is why page title is helpful because we can start to get an idea of the keywords because of our title tags. Behavior is nice because it's just going to, again, show us what pages are working better, um, how people interact on specific pages. So we can break down site content in all the pages on the site and how those individual pages were interacted with. Maybe one page had a higher bounce rate than another page and we can try to find out why. Another great thing that you can do here in behavior is look at the behavior flow. And this is one of my favorite things inside of Google Analytics because it helps me visualize where people are on the site as they're coming into the page. The number one landing page is the home page. What do they go after that? You know, and do they drop off? What's the percentage of drop off between each interaction? And this is very helpful to see how people, again, are engaging with your site. All right, so the final thing we're gonna look at is conversions and specifically goals. So right now we're on the goals overview page and what goals is helpful for is to determine whether or not users are taking the actions you want them to take. If your site's trying to drive a sale, you wanna kinda of get the thank you for purchase page tracking that someone gets there. You want to see if they're abandoning their site before they get that conversion. Um, how many people are actually doing the things that we want them to do. So this site isn't a e-commerce site. It's actually a local business site. So there's a couple of different goals that are set up, you know, um, from different behaviors that we want to see from the users online uh, to make sure that we're, we're getting contacts, that we're getting leads, that we're getting users that are engaging in the right way. So this will show you how many goals were completed. The goal value, so you can put in an estimated dollar value if you want to see how much that goal is really worth to you. Um, that helps you to understand how much a lead is and you know cost per lead and all of that kind of uh, different metrics that you can make down the road. Uh, the goal conversion rate you know, shows you how many people are, are actually converting on your site. And then what are the kind of the different completions of the specific goals? And you can also break this down over here. This is goal completion location. You can actually break it down by source and seeing what source is actually converting the best. And, and for this, this client, again, organic search is converting the best. So what does this tell you? This tells you that SEO is important for this client, that this client needs to have a good search presence because they're visitors are coming to their site they're finding the information that they want and then they're actually converting and so search is actually delivering a very very positive ROI for this specific client all right so that's a very very brief 3,000 foot overview of some of the tools inside of Google Analytics that can be very helpful to small businesses the key now is getting into the tool and tracking your site and trying to to put the pieces together and see which pages are working better see what types of channels are working better see where you can make some adjustments and test and then continue to track you're not going to always get it right the first time but it's great to have data as a baseline and then you can make adjustments then you can make recommendations off that 
Hope that you found this video helpful. And if you got any questions, please feel free to reach out. Until next time, happy marketing. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. It really means a lot. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button below. That way, every time I post a new video, you'll be one of the first people to know. You can also check us out on our website where I write blogs every single week or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for connecting with us and happy marketing.